Hello everyone and welcome to this fly tying video. Today we're going to tie the October caddis pupa. Here in the vise I have a partridge straight eye grub hook. This one is the K4AMYSE and this one is a size 16 but you could tie this up to a size 12 or whatever you feel like is the size of the caddis that are hatching in your area. So now I will quickly go through all the materials that you need for this one. To start off we have the hook, then the thread I'm going to use is this uni 6 sort in white and this is to build up the shape of the fly on this size 16s. I don't want to put on any lead free wire or it will just get a whole lot too bulky. Then for the head I'm going to switch to the nano silk from Semperfly. This one is the 80 knot in beige. The body material is the nymph skin from Virtual Nymph and this is one of my favorite materials to do all kinds of bodies or backs or thorax covers. It just has this really natural look to it and makes these perfect segmented bodies. Then for wing buds as this fly is going to be an emerging caddis or it's going from the stage from larva to this pupa and then it's going to hatch on the surface and the wings have not fully grown out so this is what we're going to imitate with some Swiss straw in brown and this material is really nice it has a little bit of shine to it but also when it gets wet it's just going to darken down a little bit and really look natural and for the front i'm going to use some of my october mix and this is completely optional but i like to add two antennas on the top of the fly if you see photos of these caddis pupas they usually have like two quite long antennas going back so I'm going to imitate that with some pheasant tail, this one has been dyed in brown. And then to imitate some legs on the fly or just a lot, whole lot of bugginess going on at the front, I'm going to add some soft tackle. I don't know if this is a rooster cape or a hen cape, but it has these really small but soft feathers. It's just perfect for a size 16, 14. This one is black, but this is also optional as the antennas. You could just leave this out and put a little bit more dubbing on, just brush it out. I will show you once we get time. So to start this off, I'm going to use my uni thread, 6 sort in white, and I'm going to start a little bit behind the eye. We don't want to build up too much bulk right behind the eye. I want to leave a little space here so we can tie on the materials later with the other thread cut off the excess and now I want to prep my nymph skin and here I've cut off a piece and this is you can use for numerous flies it's just a lot easier to work with a little longer piece and if you look at this material it has one shiny side and one that is a little bit more dull and what I do is I take the shiny side facing me and then I'm going to cut it at an angle like this and doing it this way it's going to be a lot easier to tie in and we're going to build up less bulk here going down and I'm going to tie this in on my way down so catch the end and then pull on the material, this one you can really pull on it, it's not going to break so easily. And then I'm going to take this down into the band. And here you can go as far as you want, but there I think it's quite nice. You want to have quite a long body on this one. And then with this thread I'm going to build up the shape and we want like a football shape. And this is going to be tapered going from really thin to a little bit thicker and then thin again and there we go we don't need too much on this size 16 and then I'm going to go up a little bit to the eye and I'm going to change my thread to the 80 knot 
I'm going to start this and then make a few turns around the other thread and this is going to tie it off really easily. There we go. And now we can cut off the two threads at the same time. Then to make this a little bit more secure I'm going to add a thin coat of super glue on the top and this is going to make this thread this underbody to be really really nice and glued together and then we can start bringing up this nymph skin and we want the shiny side to be on top and here on the first turns you can pull, really pull on this and it's going to make for a really nice body and you have to do slightly overlapping turns and this is going to do or give this segmented look to your fly and then as you go it's going to build up or follow the shape of your underbody and we want to take this up about to the point where we started to tying with the thick thread and then as you come up a few turns to tie this off. Make sure that this is really secure, we don't want this to slip and come undone. Then pull on your material and cut it off. A few turns just to tidy up. And then what I'm going to do is to color this with a marker and this one is light brown. I forgot to mention that you need a marker at the beginning but here we go, and what you want to do is to gently stroke this nymph skin going from the front to the back and it's going to put the colors on the edge of this nymph skin and not in the grooves and this is going to enhance the segmented look you could also do it the other way around and this is going to put a lot of color in the grooves both ways I think work just really depends on what is the look you want to achieve on your fly and now for the wing buds when you get the Swiss straw out of the package it's going to be bundled like this and what I do is I unfold this it's going to be about this wide and then I cut it lengthwise into four and then what you end up with is a piece like this and this is a fourth of what comes out of the package and then I'm going to fold this again and this I found that it's it makes for the right amount for sizes 16s, 14s, 12s I just want this to be really light and then I'm folding it so it's about the thickness of the body and then I'm going to cut the end into a little shape or to round it off just a little bit and this is going to make it appear a little more natural and then I'm going to tie it in first on my side and I want this to extend about half the length of the body few turns, make sure that this is really tied down before cutting off the end. And there we have one side, and we can then pull and cut the end off. And I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. So fold it up, cut a little a rounded point or a rounded shape at the end and then I'm going to put this on the other side as well and here this one we want to be the same length as the first one then a few turns to tie this down and there we go, there we have the two wing buds sticking out and this is a really easy way to get these to look really natural 
just with one material and this is quite durable as well. Then a few more turns to tidy up in front. And the fly looks pretty good as it is right now. You could just add a little bit of dubbing. This is what I told about in the materials list. And if you would like this fly to be really simple, you can just add a little bit of dubbing at the front, some spiky dubbing that represent the legs or just traps some air that's going to represent this little bubble that forms around the caddis pupa as it is going to ascend to the surface. But here I'm going to add a whole lot of unnecessary stuff maybe. It makes the fly look good so I'm going to add it. The first one is this pheasant tail as the antenna and I'm going to take two off the stem and these I'm going to tie in and I want these to be about two times as long as the body and I'm going to tie these in right on top make sure that they stay there a few turns just to make sure that they stay right where they are and then we can just break off the ends and then what I like to do is just crease these back a little bit, put a little bend into the pheasant tail and that way they're going to stay a little bit more streamlined with the body. Then I'm going to go up right to the eye and here I'm going to add the hackle. And this is this black soft hackle. I'm going to take one feather off. And here you don't want these fibers to be too long, they can be about a gap in length and this one I'm going to tie in by the end and I'm going to tie it in right in front like this and then I'm going to do like an 8 to tie this in really well and then fold back the stem and tie it in going towards the back and this is the way I found that it's the easiest for me to tie this in and now I have this little space and here I'm going to add some dubbing and here I'm going to add this October mix but you can use any dubbing blend or dubbing straight out of the package it just has to be a little bit darker than the other materials that you used and as for all dubbing you want to do a thin dubbing noodle to make sure that this really stays on and I'm going to build up thorax or head just about like this I think I'm going to add a little bit more oh, I can't see there we go I'm going to add just a tiny bit more and then what you want to do here is to stop at the back right before or right in between the dubbing and the body and we're going to wrap or hackle this feather going towards the back and for this I'm going to use my hackle pliers if I can find them there we go and you grab the tip and I'm going to go towards the back one or first one turn up front and then I'm going to spiral this back to the thread and with this small feather I can do about one turn going back and here what I like to do is to spin my bobbin to cord up the thread this is going to make it even thinner and it's going to really sink down into the dubbing and you won't even see it and then I'm going to catch the hackle and then with open turns I'm going to go through both the hackle and the dubbing at the same time this is going to bind everything down and this is going to make this thorax really really secure and then once I reach the eye pull back all fibers all stuff that wants to go forward and make sure that you put in a few heavy turns right behind the eye then we can reach in and just tear the tip of the feather away 
a few more turns to build up a little head on the fly. And now, before doing anything else, I want to whip finish. One, two, three. Pull tight. Then we can cut off the thread. And as the last thing, I like to just rough out the thorax a little bit and to blend the dubbing with the hackle. And this is going to make the hackle lay towards the back a little bit more as well. And I'm also going to brush out a few of these ice wing fibers and these are going to trap air as well. And then a drop of super glue on the thread. And this is going to make a nice little head on the fly. So there we go, there's the October Caddis. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time and happy time!